this, we will start a new algorithm called Google Search Algorithm. Google Search Algorithm is about this. I have N data, but they are unstructured. I should say, I did not say correctly, I should say N data in an unstructured database. So what is unstructured database, right? Uh, sometimes some database you sort it, right? If I go into the school system, I probably can find a database of all the students and maybe, I don't know, maybe they sort by the first name or last name or student ID, their structure. So if I want to find someone, let's say my student ID, if they are structured, all I need to do is do, for example, a binary research because I know that I just find the middle one. If the number is smaller than mine, then I only need to find uh, those, uh, the second half, right? If it's larger than mine, I find the first half and keep cutting. This is a lot and uh, speed up it because the number of time you need to search it uh, increase uh, as the log n, right? If I, because I keep chopping into half, okay? But for an unstructured database, basically, it's just random. I just put everything together. You can even think of like all the students just uh, in the campus. I want to find someone. I don't know their face. I don't know the gender. No, don't know the height. Then how do I find the student? I will say, hey, are you Hugh? Hey, no. Are you Hugh? I will just do it one by one. Keep asking. Oh, is your student ID this? And eventually, uh, that's true. Yeah, I am. Then I find that student. This is not unstructured, right? If it's structure, maybe all the engineering students are in the engineer building, then I know that I'm going to find Hugh who is engineer student, I just go to engineering building. Then the time of finding this data is much faster. So for this unstructured data, I might maybe, this one is what I want to find. I, I will ask a question, are you something, right? Or it can be an image. I need to compare the image, which is a very, uh, expensive calculation, for example, what is the average time I will find the data I want? What is the average time? Right, basically, I am going to search, right, if f, if x equal to a, I will get 1. If x not equal to a, Right, this x can be an index or just the data itself, but they're equivalent, right? I, I don't explain too much, but basically you do a computation. Is that f x, whether x equal to a or not, right? Like my question, are you Hugh, right? And then no, I am not, then I find another student, keep asking. What is the f h time I need to find the student if I have n students? Say again, n by two y. Because it's half. Because it's really random, right? If I'm super lucky, I pick the right person. What's your name? Oh, I'm here. Yeah. So I only need one search. If I'm super unlucky, I ask all the students and only to find the student I want at the last one. Right? That is N. Right? Uh, or in between. So on average, in a classical computer, it takes N by 2. Okay, the order of n. What does it mean? I have 10 students on average, I spend 5 query. I have 100 students, I spend 50. I have 1 million students, I spend 500,000 queries. Okay? This is classical. But with quantum computing, which is the so called Grufus algorithm, It is order of square root n. Okay. So again, what is the bin? And more precisely, if you know, uh, want to know the exact number, is pi over all, pi over four square root n. And you will be able to prove this after you learn this algorithm. Okay. So just uh, again, what does it mean, right? If I have n equals to one, the classical 
we spend one unit of time to search quantum computing also you spend one unit of time not not useful spend so much money just there's no speed up but if i have 100 students the classical one spend 50 on average and this one is spending 10 right but but now i'm going to remove the two because i really don't care about the scaling as i said before right whether it's 1 million or 500,000 is same to me too long and if I have 10 to the power 6 students, I need to search classically. I need to search in the order of 10 to the power 6, 1 million times. Classically, how much time do I need? I mean, quantum computing, <laughs> 10 to the power 3. Still a big speed up, right? I can do it now in half hours instead of 1 million seconds. Yeah. Why do I remove the two? Because we really don't care about the coefficient. It's the end what is really important in terms of the impact, right? So this is just night order of n. Because think about this, right? If I tell you that I have $1 billion and you come to me and say, oh, you're lying. You actually only have $1 billion divided by two. I will still be very proud, right? I'm still very rich. For small, then we think about this. Do we care for a small problem? We really don't care about a small problem because we can compute it fast. Why we spend time to an analyze the complexity, right? So we really care it's large problem, right? Today I have uh, so much data. Tomorrow I'm going to have uh, 1 trillion times more data. Which algorithm can help me to handle? Then it's not really n or n divided by 2, right? Uh, n divided by 2 is not going to help my stock to go up, right? But I invent a your algorithm that is log n, then that is a true breakthrough. And that's why this n divided by 2 is not really a big deal. And so we make it simple. But when you come to real implementation and comparison, when they're close, yes, you might want to discuss this end. But when you take this divided by two into account, then you need to go to even more detail. How about the preparation of the data? How about the power consumption for processing those data, right? Because this is only increased by two times, but maybe your preparation have a super big overhead, right? So now we only look at a very coarse grain, okay? Yeah, but what you think makes sense, right? But now we only care about large data. That's why we only need to talk about n instead of n divided by 2. Okay, good point. Okay, so we want to search the data. The goal is to search where the data is, so we need to keep doing computation. And the computation is to find out f of the index, f of 1 all the way to whatever. Now, then how do we do it in quantum computing? X is what we are searching for. So here come to the encoding problem. How do you encode the information into the quantum computing problem? There are many ways. One of them is called basis encoding. So you store your information as the basis state. Okay, so if X for example, that what, what it means is that now I will formulate the problem so that each basis state represents the uh, something that I want to search, the index, right? So if I'm looking for, this can be student ID. Right, just like what I'm talking about, right? Of course, student IC is equal to easy to do why we need quantum computing, but maybe this is image mapping. The image is super big, right? Infer you use a neural network that can save the time. So uh, my student ID is 01001, and I need to search who uh, the record 01001, right? And yours is 1000. So when I do the computation, right, in a classical computer, I'm going to find out what is f of a, right? I will 
try to compute, take the x. Maybe let me repeat what I said earlier. I look at each x. If x equal to a, then return 1. That is the function, right? If a, f of x not equal to a, then I return 0, right? So you see that my goal is to come up with a quantum oracle so that if the basis state is a, the output is 1. If the basis state uh, is uh, not a, then the output is 0, right? This is just an example. And here, I try to implement using a exclusive oracle. In the later session, I will use uh, uh, I, I will use the phase oracle, but here just to give an example, since we just talked about oracle, I want to use this as an example, right? So as an example, an oracle example, in this particular oracle, right? How can it make, help me to get the uh, A? First of all, how many bits do we have as the input, right? Remember this? Boss, right? You just ask me why, what are the uh, diagonal, right? This is x, this is y, this is x, this is y exclusive f of x. I want to implement this oracle. This oracle represents the problem I'm going to solve which is to search for A, right? The problem I'm going to solve is to search for A, which means that you need to return one when it is F of X need to be one when it is X equal to A. F of X equal to be zero when it is not A, right? How many bit do I have for X if I call this MSB? How many qubit do I have for X? Based on what I show you at the top, how many qubit are we using? Five, right? Five qubit because we encode it in the basis states, right? So you have five qubit. How many qubit do we have for y? One, because the output is either zero or one, right? So that's it. That's what I need to do. And now let me show you that why uh, on the right is a possible circuit, right? So this is what you need to do in your homework and your project, right? For uh, Not for Groover's algorithm, right? But you need to create your own oracle. Now I'm, I want to tell you this is the correct oracle. Why? Because if my input is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, no. I have it upside down. What do you mean? No, my MSB is on the top. Do you see I put X4? Yeah. So, so in this case, I put MSB on top, not the IBM Q case. Right, so MSB is zero. This is MSB, this is LSB. Yeah, so zero, one, zero, zero. Okay, but then uh, I, I have the wrong circuit, right? You want to say? Yeah, I forgot to swap the circuit. Yeah, so this is wrong. Um, <laughs> Yes, thank you, <laughs> thank you. You are smart, right? So, so everyone, I made a mistake because I, uh, I was actually using LSB to draw this circuit, right? But I already labeled them wrongly as MSB because compared to last semester, I tried to swap it. I did not swap everything, so I'm going to change one thing. I know it's annoying, but. He has a very good suggestion. I'm going to change A, okay? I'm going to change A to 1, 0, 0, 
one zero. Is that okay? I just think that I'm going to change it. Then everything is correct. Okay. So I start with one zero zero one zero. Is that okay? That is the input. That is x, right? What is y? Usually we start with zero. Okay, we start with zero. After I go through the first set of gate, what is this? One. What is this? the next one? X3. One. 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 Zero, right? What is this gate? Do you know? Can you give the full name? Con this is control not gate. What's the full name of this one? Control, 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 not gate. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Indeed, that is true. But what it means is what? By your definition, as you know before, this only happen if all of them are one, right? So if I really want to write this gate when I apply to a, a basis state, this is like, I call it C5 not right and I apply to uh, what uh, this one I have x4 x3 x2 x1 x0 y this is a six qubit circuit it is equals to x4 nothing change x3 x2, x1, x0, nothing changed. I try to separate them. And then, okay. And then this one I'm going to do, x4, do you remember how do you write the equation for not control not? They all need to be need to you control you use, use exclusive all right but now you need all of them to be one first right right this is talking about the basis state if any of this is zero don't change y if this is one negate y that is meaning of the control now right but just that we have Besides your parents, you still have your aunt, whatever, <laughs> keep controlling you. All of this, right? Making decision whether you should get married to that boy or that girl or not. Control, 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 not. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Then you need to change the oracle. But that makes sense. No, no, that. For sim it doesn't make sense here, right? It not speak up. But that makes sense because the oracle should contain the information of your problem. And your problem is FA equal to one. And that's why you, your oracle must be different for different problem. I know it's useless now, but do you understand? I think that if your A is changed, then the oracle needs to change because the problem of finding you in this class is different from the problem of finding me in this class because we have different student ID. Yeah, understand. You understand, that, right? Yes. Now, practical, as I said last time, for oracle, you, first of all, if you can construct this for this simple one, you don't need to search because you already know where it is, right? Remember, you only search one. Yeah, so you need to rely on some physical mechanism, which I also don't know exactly how to do it. You, you can uh, decompose it, right? There will be some algorithm that will help you to automatically build up the circuit with, for different oracle, for different A. This one is just a toy model, a, a example for you. It's not going to gain any advantage, even it works, right? But there will be an algorithm uh, to 
help you to decompose, right? You say, I'm searching for this, this number, and then you just come up with all the quantum gates that is necessary to implement that oracle. Or maybe there's a physical system. You don't know what is inside, but you know that it gives you something like this. So this is just an illustration of the idea. Yeah. So that is a good question. I, I probably did not really answer well, but think about that. Okay. Good. So then after then after the last case is going to be what? One, zero, zero, one, zero. So the important thing is the X does not change. It's still the same. But the Y equals to indeed Y is zero exclusive of if it is one, right? This one gives you one, right? I mean, our ex the answer we are expecting is y exclusive f of, x, of f of x, but f of x is one now, right? So I should get one. And in D, what do I get? I get one, right? In D, this is equal to this one. This circuit make the output equal to this one, right? So this implemented the oracle, yeah. They are just regular NOT gate. Why do I need it? Because I want to rely on this control, 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 not to... Yeah. Yeah, afterward, but because by this oracle, why do I, we need this free, very good question? Because we need to keep the X unchanged based on exclusive oracle. Do you see that? That is the definition. X cannot change. If you don't put back this not gate, the output will be one 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 one. It's no longer x. You rotate it. I care about that because this is yes. The information might come from y, but I care about that because that is how I get this reversible. If this is not x, I cannot say this is i anymore. That is the definition. Yeah, this is the criteria you need to follow. Yes, you can say maybe I only care the middle, but not really. Think about the Deutsch algorithm. What do you measure? You measure X, you don't measure the Y. Right? You measure the MSB. Actually, the bottom one are the, the one you're going to dump. Although the bottom one contains the information. But because they, as a whole, the whole system as a whole contains the information. Even you don't measure the bottom, the information at the bottom affects the top. But that is just a simple uh, one basis day, right? When you go to superposition, then you see the effect. Do you remember when you go to superposition, you, do me you measure the top one. What is left, the plus state or minus state is left, really depends on what is at the bottom. And the bottom got cancelled or not cancelled, depend on whether it's balanced or not balanced. Right? So let's summarize what he said. Why we need the top to be X when it comes out? And that is why we still need to convert this one back to this not gate. Right? Why we need to keep this as X? First of all, because we need this so that we can make sure this one is a reversible quantum gate. If you don't have this, if this X is changed to arbitrary things, then this is not reversible. First of all, might not be reversible, right? Our proof is based on this. Is this okay? No, but for quantum gate, you want is using quantum mechanics. It needs to be reversible. Yes, we, we don't go back, but then this one cannot be implemented physically if you cannot go back. Remember why quantum gates needs to be reversible? Because the quantum mechanics is reversible. And if you have something not reversible, it means you cannot implement by using physical quantum mechanics. It won't work. For example, you say, can I have a pulse shine to here so that it's not reversible? No, because quantum mechanics say that it must be reversible. 
So you cannot find such pulse. Basically, it means that you cannot implement a gate of the type you are talking about. I guess I'm, stuck. I'm still looking at the circuit from my friend. It says inputs are coming in from the left, circuit is progressing to the right. That seems to me by the time the CNOT operation is done, your MS with that output Y. Use that to you. That is right. But the nature say that you need to keep it. You can don't look at it, you discard it as rubbish, but the nature said it needs to be exist. Because if it doesn't exist, this is not a operation allowed by quantum mechanics. The quantum mechanics say that if you rotate this vector to this side, you should be able to rotate it back. And what you're saying is that it might not be able to rotate back, and you won't be able to find such physics to implement this rotation if you cannot rotate it back. Make, make sense or no? Okay, maybe think about it, right? But the main point is that this one must uh, follow the physics and the Schrodinger equation say that it must be time reversal. Okay, you can go back, right? If you cannot go back, then it means you cannot find a physical way to do that, okay? That is the first point, right? And then separate point, he was saying that uh, we only care about maybe, I mean, the bottom already contain the information, right? Even you screw up, let's say the nature allows us to do that. Even you screw up the top, what is the problem? But no, this is a whole system. If you look at the Deutsch algorithm, the way we get the answer is that we only measure the MSB. And the MSB, will tell us whether it's balanced or not because the LSB will cancel themselves when it is balanced or uh, non balance. So the effect is such that the reason you always get plus is because the uh, that function make the MSB cancel. Even you don't look at the MSB, but it has some effect to your measurement result. Not inside of the after after all, right? So this one is important. You try to think about that. Just go back to the algorithm. Go back to the Dodge algorithm, right? And then you tell yourself, now I just dump away the MSB. See if you can get the answer, right? You and then probably you won't. And then you ask yourself, then why I can get the answer even the MSB does not contain f of x, right? And you see that because the LSB is doing some destructive or constructive interference that allow you to get the answer from MSB. Yeah, there, there is the core. Uh, I say it, but you need to verify yourself, right? But there is a very good question, right? And that really tell you what to do with quantum oracle and you should not make mistake now in the exam, right? And you can try to add other things, right? I can quickly show, for example, if I do this is a, right? This is x not equal to a. For example, let's say it's zero, 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 one, zero, right? Then if you go in, this is zero, uh, one, 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 zero, zero, right? Seven of us will be one, sorry, yes. Yeah? But then, control, 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 no. One of them say no, unfortunately. Probably the mother say, no, you cannot marry. Then, what do you get? Zero, right? And do I get it right? Yes, because f of x is supposed to be zero, right? So zero exclusive of zero is zero. I do get zero, right? So that is a way to look into the quantum oracle. Right? This is something you need to do not this algorithm, but for Deutsch algorithm, the four different oracle. Try to play, do something similar, okay? Okay, so we understand the problem better now, and let's do an overview of the Groover's algorithm. The first thing is that uh, we encode the x right? What we are searching as the basis. That's why I call it basis encoding. You need to do this encoding 
and you need to transform your function into that. Is that okay? Just remember this, right? We are not doing the detail yet. Then we have three important vectors. The first vector is the target, right? I encode it, right? So A is what I want to search for. So A is the target. I draw it here. Vertical 9. Then there's another vector perpendicular to A. What is that? The A is multidimensional, right? Just now we show 5 qubit, right? So what will be the A perpendicular B? We define it as a linear superposition. Of course, we know A prevent. Uh, maybe you can tell me. What is A inner product A perpendicular? Zero, why? Or orthogonal, yeah? So A, we define it perpendicular. We define as a linear superposition of all X. Except x from 0, but x not equal to a. All the way to 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, where 2 to the power n equal to the number of entries we are going to search. I have uh, 1024 entry. I need how many qubits? If I have 124 entry, 124 student, 1024 student, how many qubits do I need for this problem? For I mean for encoding. 10. 10, right? Because 2 to the power 10 equal to this. So I only need 10 qubits. Right? So I will go from x0 to 0 all the way to 2 to the power n minus 1, which is 1023, but not including a, right? Basically, this is 0 plus 1 all the way to a minus 1 plus a plus 1. Okay, I'm ignoring the a. Right, and plus all the way to 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, in this case is 1, 0, 2, 3. Okay, yeah. Yes, it has more than two dimensions, but isn't that this vector is just one vector? Think about this. How many vectors do I have here? Very good, right? He's, he's asking why I only have one vector. I'm only just talking about this vector is what I constructed to be a linear superposition of all the basis state that is perpendicular to A. That is one vector, right? So think about this if it is 3D. If this is A, right, then this is A perpendicular, if it is 3D. Do you see that? Right? I have one vector here, one vector here. This is the one perpendicular, so I take that plane. That is that plane, right? So if you have even 100 dimension, it's still one vector. I can project on a 2D plane, right? Very good. But I need to normalize it, right? This one is a little bit complicated. How many vectors do I have here? 2 to the power n minus 1, right? So I normalize by square root 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, so a little bit confusing still at this stage, but remember I'm just introducing an overview. We'll go to the details. The point is we encode the number as the basis, and then we have three important vectors, the target A, and then we create another perpendicular to it. For some reason, we will know later, A perpendicular. The last important vector is psi which is just an equal superposition. So what is that? You should be able to tell me, what is that? Of all the basis vector. Summation, x equal to zero, two, two to the power n minus one, x, right? And I do normalize it to the power n 
divided by 2. What is the difference between this one and this one? Yes. This one contains all vector. It's a superposition of A and also other basis vector. This one, we take away A. Okay, so basically, it's good that we drew this. This is the vector side. It's a superposition of all the basis vector. This is 45 degree to all the angle, right? And this is just those, this on the plane, right? But they are still on the same plane because Psi is just a linear combination of A and A perpendicular, right? Because A and A perpendicular, the only difference is that one of them has A, one does not have A, right? And Psi is, I have everything. It's still a linear combination. That's why I can draw Psi on the same plane. So I'm still on 2D plane, but I'm rigorously correct. A is going up. A perpendicular is horizontal, and then I have psi. Do you see the psi is very close to A perpendicular instead of A? Why? Any suggestion? Because almost because A psi has all the components of the basis state, except, I mean, has, has everything, right? And A perpendicular also have the component of everything except A. Now, if you have a dimension of one trillion, the A component is very tiny. Make sense? And that's why psi is very close to A perpendicular. Okay? Then what do we do? We will invent an algorithm, which is Groover's algorithm. It has two operators. One is V, one is W. If first we flip psi about A perpendicular, okay? Then I get this one. The second step is, this is V, W, is to flip the vector, any resulting vector, about psi. Like here. And then what do you do? Repeat again. Flip again. Repeat again. Flip again. Repeat again. Flip again. And then the final vector is A. It align with A. That is the idea of Groover's algorithm. Okay? And this operation only takes you square root n time. You only to, need to do it square root n time. When I flip about, some of you are try to pointing, right? Flip about v, you actually rotate it by 2 theta. Then you go up, you rotate it by two, 4 theta. You go down again, you rotate it by... Uh, no, here it will be uh, 6 theta, right? Because about A perpendicular. But if you say this, yeah, and then you go up again, so you, you just go much faster when every time you go up. That's why it gives you the square root. But the point is, you see that this algorithm eventually will bring your solution psi, which is a superposition, to only have the A component. And you measure it, then you know what is A. At the beginning, you only have psi, right? You measure it, you get all the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 2n minus 1. But after all this flipping, it's basically just A. You measure it, you only get A. Uh, if you don't do it well, you will pass A. But here, you will do something. Be careful, not let it pass A. And also think about if it's very close to A, you have a very large chance you are at A already. Maybe you can just verify, right? You say, I just do a, log, a square root algorithm and then identify maybe you are the student I'm looking for. Maybe I get it wrong, actually I got another one. You say, no, 
Then, okay, do one more time. Again, square root is useful, right? I, maybe next time I get you. Yeah, but of course there are many details I don't know, right? But uh, that is the idea, right? So this is rotate two theta, and this is rotate four theta, right? This is clockwise. This is counter clockwise. Right. Now, naturally, when I do this flipping, what do you think? I still have not thought about the fx, right? The function. The oracle must embed something, right? So where should I embed this f of a? The vector cannot embed f of a. It must be the operator, right? Which operator makes sense to embed the f of a? Do you think it's v or w? Yeah, it is v. Very good. It must be in v because v is about rotating, flipping about a perpendicular. Yeah, it doesn't have a. It means that it contains information of a, right? It has everything but A. It means it has the information of A. You know what A is. So we are going to use this V to do the F of A calculation, which will be a phase oracle. Okay, we will see that later. But I hope that you can appreciate uh, overall what we are trying to do here. Is that okay? What happened to what? W is still useful. It's going to use for flipping, but I want to contain the info. Where can I find the information of f of a? Where should I embed the f of x information into? I will embed into v, right? Because it's rotating about a perpendicular, right? Then it must be there. Because the rotation of W has nothing to, be, to do with a perpendicular. It is about psi, phi, right? Very good. <clears throat> so let's start doing one by one, right? How do we implement the V operator? So we are going to define, this is like the genius, they find it out. All, what, all we need to do is just to verify it is correct. We say we are going to do a V, apply to the basis state, and it's equal to negative 1 F of X, Xn. So this is a phase oracle, okay? So we are going to implement V using a phase oracle. How to do it is another thing. Assume we can do it, okay? So what does it mean? It means this is equal to negative xn if f of x equals to a because it gives you 1. Right? It's equal to x if f of x not equal to a because it gives you zero. Right? Basically, it's saying that if x equal to a, I will get negative. If x is not a, I will get positive one. Right? Because what, we, what problem are we solving? We're trying to find out where is which is the record I'm searching, right? And when it is A, the one I'm searching, you should give me 1, right? So as a result, negative uh, 1 to the power F of X needs to be uh, this one, right? Uh, if it's not what I'm searching, then F of X is 0, then this is positive. Negative 1 to the power 0 is 1, right? So this, that's it. So uh, this is the oracle or the V option that we are going to do. But I need to prove to you that it does flip, right? Uh, so now let's check the property. Right, this is done already, right? You come up with this. So let's see for a general vector, right? For any vector. For any vector, I can always, always represent it as beta equals to summation 
x equal to 0 to the power n minus 1 beta x x. Do you understand this equation? Well, it's just a linear combination of all the basis states, right? It's basically saying, okay, any vector, any n-dimensional vector, it is beta 0 times 0 state, beta 1 times 1 state, all the way to beta 2n minus 1 times 2 to the power n minus 1 state. That's it. That's, that's a general vector, right? Let's see what happened. Does it really do the rotation we want? If I apply the V to beta, okay, by the distribution rule, right? This is equals to beta zero, negative, negative one to the power F of zero. Correct? Right? This is the rule. Plus beta 1, negative 1 to the power of f of 1. Plus beta a, negative 1 to the power beta f of a. A, right? Because a is at the one of the vector also, I don't write the rest. All of them are zero when they are not equal to A. So these are positive. Except that when it is A, this is negative. Because F of A equal to one, so negative one to the power one is negative. So this one give me beta zero, zero, beta one, one, Negative one, I mean, maybe I will just write negative beta a a, and then the rest are still plus beta two n minus one, two n minus one. Okay, does it work? What does it do? It keep all vector except free right the sign of a so let's look at this figure This is A. This is A perpendicular. I have this beta, right? This beta can be decomposed into this. It means it keep everything the same, but it flip only the coefficient of A. So isn't that this is, of course, this is V beta. In D, this one flip with respect to A perpendicular. So what I'm trying to say here is that first, this is given the V operator, right? The smart people invented it. You can invent it also. And we check the property. Indeed, for any vector you give me, what it does is to flip the beta with respect to A perpendicular. And this achieves what I'm saying here. So, and if of course, keep rotating, right? But this beta is a general beta. So I do always flip about the A perpendicular. So this achieves the goal of V, okay? I'm a little bit slow, but uh, I will stop here today. Okay, thank you.